Now, let me ask this question. So what difference does Jesus make? What does Jesus say about these three questions? Let's take the first one, the meaning of life. Why am I here? What does God say about that? What does the architect who put it all together say about that? Ah, this is what he says. It's not complete, it's not complicated, very simple. You are created to glorify God and to enjoy God forever. Whew. David Schenck, created by God, to know God, to love God, to fellowship with God, and to enjoy Him forever. Wow! That means that every day of my life is packed with meaning and purpose in God's grand plan. It's tremendous. <laughs> and for me, personally, by God's grace, the meaning of life was revealed to me when I was a little boy in Tanzania. And I said yes to God's answer to that question. I, by your grace, I will glorify you and I'll serve you forever. And that happened many years ago. And so for some 70 years now, I've been living day by day, knowing the answer to the question. <laughs> and I'm just delighted. <laughs> I know the answer to the question why I'm here. What about death? As Jesus walks across the page of a person who is an atheist or a Confucianist or an African traditional religion like I described here in Bumangi, as Jesus walks across the page of the different religions and cultures and they're asking this question, what is the meaning of death? What does Jesus say about that? What does he say? Ah, I created you. I have redeemed you so that you may enjoy eternal life with me forever and ever. <laughs> Death is not the end of the journey. It's only the beginning. That a million years from now, we can meet in heaven someday and talk about this class we had. Do you remember there in that class how we talked about what will happen at death? Woo! And here we are, you know, bodily resurrection, where we rise from the dead and enjoy God eternally. That's the answer to the question that Jesus brings into the conversation, you see. The meaning of death. To enjoy God eternally in resurrected life. Yeah, yeah. And so we see that as Jesus walks across the page, what does he say about the question of forgiveness? Jesus says, look, I died for your sins. You are forgiven. I asked Paul Young E. Cho in Korea one day, who has planted the largest church in the world, a million people gathering together in Seoul, Korea every Sunday, you know, worshiping Jesus, committed to Christ. And I asked him, Paul, why is it that every, every, every month you are baptizing hundreds, if not thousands, of Buddhists coming to faith in Christ here in Korea? What's going on? What, what, what's, what, why? Why? He said, David, in Buddhism, there is no forgiveness. Remember the monk who told me there is no such thing as forgiveness? He said, that's the Buddhist message. There is no forgiveness. And people yearn to be forgiven. We preach Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, our forgiving Savior. Whew. Such good news. People just crashing the gates to get in. I need forgiveness. So in Jesus, there is forgiveness. I went to his church one Sunday when I was in Seoul, Korea. And he was preaching that Sunday, Paul Young Yi Cho. A sermon being heard by a million people across that great city. And what do you think he preached about? 
Jesus Christ died for our sins. <laughs> in Jesus, there is forgiveness. Such good news. And when you fly, when you fly into that country that used to be a Buddhist country, and you look out the windows of the airplane, this great city of Seoul, about 8 million people, you look to the right and to the left at night, when you fly into that city at night, and all across that city, as far as you can see, you see red neon lights on the roofs. They're the neon lights of crosses on the roofs of buildings across that great city. It just glows with the red from one end of the city to the other on the housetops all across that city. The cross, the cross of Jesus on those housetops, giving a witness to the airplanes flying into Seoul. There is forgiveness in this man who died on that cross. It's amazing, amazing. That testimony even to the skies of the forgiveness we have in Jesus. Such very, very good news, you see. And so people will come to Jesus because they see in him an answer to the three basic questions that is very good news. A good news answer. And the conviction that this answer is the truth. That's why people become believers in Jesus. Yeah. And so as we look at world religions, we'll be asking ourselves that question along the way. In what ways is Jesus good news? What difference does he really make as he walks across the culture, the pages of the culture of different people? We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.